Friday, January 16th on the Sports Guys with Norm Haney. We were fortunate enough to have WKU head football coach David Elson in the studio for the full hour. Here's a look at some of the things Coach Elson had to say about the offseason, this past season, and most importantly, the upcoming 2009 season. Well, and, and I know we mentioned this last year, actually the last few years, that uh, the move to 1A football, the new stadium renovation, well, that all kind of came together last year, and it really comes together next season. Um, you continue to get that positive uh, reaction from recruits now that you guys are moving to 1A, the stadiums come together, and really the, the fan support this year I thought was tremendous. You had great crowds, and uh, it was just a different feeling around uh, WKU football this year. It, it really was, and i tell you um, – Bringing kids to campus and, and this whole recruiting process, the, the great thing about it now is uh, we say, hey, you, the transition's over. You know, we've been having to fight the transition and, and kind of people have used that against us. Oh, they're, you know, they're the bottom of the barrel, this and that. And, and now we're saying, hey, the facility's going to be done. You know, they're, they're redoing the turf right now. Uh, there's still some finishing touches throughout the building and around, but um, but when this class gets here this June, I mean, you're talking a finished product, everything brand spanking new. Uh, people are going to be really excited, I think, when they see when they come to the stadium next year and see uh, the turf and the fact that the the track has been taken out and it's going to be nothing but a football field in there. So, uh, going to be a whole new atmosphere. I think even better than what they experienced last year. So, uh, it. it, it it's our first off season too, getting to use the facility. That's the other thing that we forget is, you know, they were getting ready for the move last year. Yeah. Last yeah. year we're getting ready for the move and then we got the move put off and then it was put <laughs> off and then it was put off until August 1st. So, um, it, it really is still a lot of new things and exciting things that are, that are coming up and, um, you know, we're excited as, as, as we've ever been. Well, in the South Florida game, I mean, you're bringing in a team yeah. that's been ranked in the top 25 quite a bit the last few seasons. And, are expected to have another very competitive team in the Big East next year. The field, that's when it's, according to Dr. Salig, officially going to be done and fans can get ready. The the, the field goal post will be centered with the scoreboard, yep. the new field. That uh, It's going to be an exciting game for, for one sense that uh, it's, it's maybe the first really high-profile D1A program that's coming into Smith Stadium. And I uh, have to imagine that's circled on the calendar and uh, that's something you'll be talking about all offseason as you work to get ready. Oh, yeah. I mean, to say that our home opener – uh, for the first 1A season ever in the history of our school, the home opener is going to be against South Florida, who is about as good as a, of a model of starting and going oh, yeah. 1A as, as you're going to find. Uh, man, that's exciting, and, and we're going to have some big things planned for uh, that game and that night. And so, you know, I think it's something that uh, we all have uh, had to look forward to, our players, our coaches, and fans, and the entire community. Well, and I volunteered, Coach, halftime if you need me to come in and wrestle a bear, anything like that, I'd be willing to do it, just to spice up the lineup a little bit. That's a good idea. Have you you heard of somebody that's done that before? Uh, Nobody that's lived. I I plan on being the first. Okay, well... um... Let me write that down and and think about that, and I'll I'll get back to you. Okay, there you go. Three, thirty-eight! Coach, I know you guys had set your your expectations or your goals to, to have a winning season, to carry that tradition. It didn't work out that way, 2-10. Uh, and ten. Obviously, uh, not what you had hoped for. You knew going in it was going to be tough with the schedule you had and, and the amount of 1A teams you were going to play. Uh, what was it that maybe kept the team from getting over the hump in some of those games? Because you guys were right there in, in four or five of those games and very well could have came close to getting that winning record. Uh, Norm, I gotta be honest with you here. I, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Um, I have mastered the art of having a short memory. Oh, okay. And so it's 2009, it's and we're undefeated. I mean, it's we're zero and zero. So uh, really, I good I answer. I, I I can't. I'm not, I don't recall. No, <laughs> I no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. But that is the way we are approaching things. Trust me. But well, you have to. You do. Yeah. You have to look forward. You got to sure. move forward. But you got to. You got to learn. You know, from from what we went through. And I think you know, there's no question that we learned a lot. Um, five out of six on the road. You know, as I look back on it, to start the season, 
that that was taxing on us, you know, as as a football team, and and we, we were playing a lot of young guys and uh, some some guys that had redshirted, you know, the the, the Ryan Beards, the um, Darius Brooks, and those guys, and sophomores, and Quinterrence Cooper, and and Winquell Graves, and those guys. So as I look back at it, you know, it, it just um, it was a, a very aggressive, very tough schedule. And uh, we competed well uh, throughout the season, at times better than others. Um, but I guarantee you, our guys learned a lot from it. We learned a lot as coaches. And, um, you know, really looking forward to uh, taking those learning experiences and putting them to use and, and getting this thing started off right in 09. As somebody whose final collegiate season was an 0-10 uh, campaign, I, I know how difficult that uh, the week-to-week grind can be when you're not picking up those wins. Uh, how tough was it as a coach to continually keep your guys focused and motivated, especially after games like FAU and yep. North Texas where you were so close, you were at home, and uh, the sting just doesn't go away when you take those shoulder pads off and go in the locker room. Yeah, I'm telling you, that that's, was the amazing thing this year was this senior class did such a great job of – of just listening, buying in, being coachable. And when we said, hey, there's a 24-hour rule, uh, we got to learn from this and move on. And, and they were able to do that. I mean, I, as coaches, we really looked at it. And, and I had people that, you know, come to practice periodically and, and said, you know, you guys look like you're practicing like, you know, you're, you're 10 and 2 or whatever it was at the time. I mean, so – we we're proud of that. You know, our guys kept their heads up and, and stayed the course. And uh, we know that we're close. We know that there's, you know, um, some, some little things that we could have done uh, in some of those games that could have really changed things. And, and we've got to, we as a coaching staff have got to figure out the best ways to work on those things in the off season and improve. And when those opportunities come this year, uh, our guys are in position to make those plays and make good decisions and, and uh, pull out victories in the fourth quarter. Three, 38, the hunt. You know, you look at a team like Utah who you said – you know, they went to Ann Arbor, and I know Michigan didn't end up being that good this year. But, uh, you know, they played six six bowl teams, play, beat four top 25 teams at the end of the year. They did everything that can be asked of a team. They went undefeated. They beat Alabama in an SEC site, basically, in, in Louisiana. Doesn't your heart kind of go out for, for Kyle Whittingham and the Utah Utes who, who did everything they were supposed to do and really, maybe before the season even started, never really had a fair shot at winning a national title? Well, it does, um, but they've got to get their conference better. Their conference commissioners got to get their conference better and get them competing better out of league and get their, to me, their their power index or whatever it is, they got to get better as a conference. And that's where I think you take out the human element, you come up with a formula, and it is going to force the Sun Belt, the Conference USA, MAC, Mountain West, WAC, to – Make our conferences better. It's going to force the Pac-10 to get their conferences better, to maybe funnel some money to some of the lessers to to upgrade a facility. Or you know, like I said, I don't know the details, but you know that's uh, to me what's got to happen. And you know, but Utah for the rest of their lives are going to be able to say they were thirteen and zero, and you know were the best in the country. And like I said. I feel for them at the same time I don't because it is, you know, like I said, the, the conference you're in is going to – it's just where we're at, and, and they knew that going in. Here's the other thing that, in my mind, makes absolutely, positively no sense, and you can't possibly convince me otherwise. We have six BCS conference – or six BCS conferences. Mm-hmm. Three of the six have a championship game. Where does that make sense? Alabama, I, I agree with where you're going with this. Alabama 12 and 0, they're the ones that should be feel slighted. Yeah, they had to try to beat we Florida. We ran the table yeah. and we're in a major league. we're in one of the big we're in the SEC and yeah. we ran the table and we don't get to play for the national championship because our conference chooses to have a conference championship game. And if I'm in the Big East and I go 12 and 0, I'm done. Yeah. If I'm USC in the Pac-10 12 and 0, I'm playing for it. How those conferences can continue to agree to do that blows my mind. And oh, I know I it comes back to money that the conference championship game generates, but somebody's got to say, hey, Big East, get bigger, and Big uh, Ten and World Pac-10, have a, have a championship. Or we don't all do it. I mean, it's just, to me, I, I, it's 
Christian Mason. We thank Hilltopper head coach David Elson for joining the show. Remember to catch the Sports Guys with Norm Haney live from 5 to 6 p.m. on 1340 The Ticket or right here on 1340WBGN.com.